I'm Adrian. I'm a data engineer at Piccolo. Um, so I've been let out today to talk to you about data visualization. And so what I'm going to be doing is talking about some of the things that we've been looking at, what we've been working on in terms of data, uh, to give you a bit more of a sort of Piccolo sort of take on, on this. So hopefully keep you interested for the next 15 minutes and you won't be thinking too much about lunch. Um, so I was asked to kind of put this talk together on the importance of data initially, and I thought well, it was an interesting question because actually, uh, you know, data is the most important part, in my opinion at least, um, on, of the sort of DSO flexibility markets and, and the operations of them, because it really is at the heart of everything. Um, I think the things that are really important to sort of outline here for flex providers is mostly asset data. And I think the discussions we've been having today have really been focusing on that. But obviously, you know, in terms of what we're doing and what we're trying to enable here, you know, we're, we're marrying up this asset data and competition data. We're making it visible to people. We're doing that qualification. We're allowing flex providers to bid. We're allowing flex providers in, in the future when we move into operations and settlement to tell us about their availability and, and get them to be dispatched and paid eventually. Okay, so really what I'm trying to outline here is that, you know, data is the sort of driving engine of the flexibility marketplaces and, and, the, and the way we want to operate them. And, you know, our, our data is your data. You know, we, we can't do anything without the data that you provide us. Um, and really what we're trying to do is operate a service around that data. And so just some figures that I've got here, you know, uh, true as of last week, we've had 60, over 66,000 individual assets uploaded to Piclo. Not all of them real or still active, but you know, just to give you a scale idea of the scale of interaction we've had, there's been four gigawatts total of bids submitted, and uh, the last one here is 1,326 uh, 1, Excel files uploaded, uh, which you know I'll, I'll talk about right now. Um, I think. The reason I put that last number up is because I think a lot of you probably are quite familiar with our Excel files. Uh, maybe not for good reasons, uh, but basically, you know, we have this kind of challenge to overcome, right? We need your data, we need to interface with you to get that data. And uh, we made the decision to go down kind of this Excel files and, and UI route um, because of its low complexity. Um, you know, everybody probably has access to Excel. There's a very wide amount of skill in Excel uh, in the workforce, and, you know, a lot of people uh, love Excel or love to hate it. And, um, you know, we're able to gather quite a lot of data through that in an efficient way. But in reality, it's quite a high effort thing, okay? Um, we, uh, we recognize that. We understand that Every time you want to give us information about your assets, about your bids, if you have to fill out an Excel form, you're needing to kind of convert data from your internal kind of view to, to how we want you to give it to us. And actually, there's quite a lot of effort involved in that. So what we really want to do is move towards this right-hand side of this equation where we're talking about API integrations and automation. And you know, we might think of those as sort of high, high complexity uh, you know, you need to maybe uh, bring some software development resource to, to, to bear on that. But once they're in place, they're very low effort. And it really unlocks a lot of value in, and, and options when it comes to uh, how flexibility marketplaces can be run. And so just on the note of, of APIs, um, we're starting to produce quite a few public APIs. and. At the moment, there's, um, you know, you're, if you're, as a fetch provider, you're able to maintain your asset data on Piccolo via API. Uh, I encourage everybody to visit the, the, the docs site. It's uh, got a team involved with, with all integrations, and they're very proud of our docs site. So have a look at that and uh, give us your feedback. Um, and you know, coming very soon, you'll be able to also submit bids via API. And later on in early next year, I'm looking at you know, the operational side of things and APIs there because it's going to be absolutely key to an efficient and, and sort of uh, um, stable operation of, of flexibility dispatching. So I think, you know, 
we're focusing in on asset data today because you know that is really what is underlying everything really like your assets are what's going to be delivering flexibility um, and they're sort of the bread and butter of the data that we we collect and um, you know uh, we get a lot of kind of questions from advisors, but wh why do you collect all the data that you do um, and I think first and foremost we're, we're looking at kind of the qualification I think we've been talk talked about a little bit before but really giving you the idea of what are the opportunities available to you uh, and what competition can you participate in and giving the system operators the ability to kind of look at what's available and, and do the planning and resourcing that they need to do. And uh, you know, we operate kind of a two-stage qualification process where we're automatically trying to do the matchmaking based on you know, whether you're approved of a DPS, whether you have the right capacities to, to, to sort of participate in whatever product is, is being uh, procured for the right voltage and location, can you connected to the right place? But then, you know, ultimately, when system operators are looking at the final qualification of your assets, they're looking at quite a lot more, right? They're looking at your operational parameters, your response time, your runtime. They're looking at your MPAN. Where, where are, exactly are you connected in the grid topology? Uh, they might be looking at aggregate capacity, and you know, we talked a little bit about net zero. They might be looking at your asset type, right? You know, what are your battery or your gas peaking plant? What, what are you? Because that might be interesting for them. They might be looking at carbon intensity of the assets that they're procuring. Uh, and also, you know, operational, general operational aspects of the asset. So I think, you know, the point I'm trying to make here is that, you know, we really want you to maintain as rich as asset data as you can on PICLO. And, and, and we're really trying to encourage that and support that. And we've been looking at that. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of ongoing projects, stuff we've recently done, stuff that is in the works, stuff that's going to come out soon. And uh, the first one is related very much to what I just talked about. Uh, and that is a sort of more support, more UI, more uh, file-based support on basically making sure that your asset data is complete or helping you make sure that asset data is complete and then giving that uh, information to the system operators so that they can effectively and efficiently run those procurement events. So you can expect to see this you know, in the next couple of quarters. Next time you participate in a competition on Flex, Piccolo Flex, you'll be able to kind of be drawn to sort of the completeness of your asset and, uh, and the asset data, I should say, and, um, and make sure that you know, you've got the right information there to, to reduce the kind of back and forth uh, that, you, that you're doing with the system operator. Now, we talked a lot about flex, uh, planned assets already. And um, you know, this is a really interesting thing for us because it actually is an occasion where we found something we didn't expect. So you can see kind of the growth of, of assets on the platform over time here. And the blue area is, is the planned assets. And you can see ever since 2020, there's been quite a lot of planned assets. And it represents a, a fairly significant proportion of the overall megawatts in, in our asset data. Um, and what we realized was that actually, you know, people were using planned assets as a way to prove the business case of, of development. So they weren't necessarily real in any sense. They weren't kind of planned to be somewhere specific. They, you know, it's just flex providers who are just trying to say, if we develop these assets, you know, would, and we won contracts on them, you know, what, what kind of economic benefits can we get from flexibility there? So, you know, what we've done is we've actually defined that in its own model, right? We, we've got operational sort of uh, uh, in development assets which have a specific place, you know, they, they, they exist outside of a competition. And then we also now support kind of the, uh, planned assets which are maybe a little bit more speculative in, in nature. And what, what we really want to do here is we want to kind of support, you know, the burgeoning kind of flexibility marketplace allow you guys to kind of explore the business case of, of these asset plans and also give system operators the visibility so that they can sort of make decisions about how much risk they want to take on with regards to planned assets. So you'll see this if, if, you know, if you're uploading assets to Piccolo Flex now, you'll see that there's a new uh, uh, sheet in the workbook that, that allows you to kind of define what these are. 
And I think another thing that we, we, we're excited about that's, that's coming up in sort of the end of the year, early next year, is, is, is really kind of formalizing our provision of open data. And I love working in the energy industry because open data is, is really taken seriously um, by, by a lot of industry, industry participants. And you know, we, we take it seriously too. And um, at the moment, I think we've got kind of a lackluster approach to, to, to our open data. We do have open data sets that are available through PicReflex. Pick but we could do a lot more. And I think, you know, we we're talking earlier about how to sort of understand what value and revenue people can get from PicReflex. And I think, you know, open data is a really important part of that equation. And I, what I really want to sort of highlight here is that, you know, we, we do try and respond to requests if people want to know something about the historic data that we've got or any analytics that we have. We do our, we all do our best to provide what we can. And so I, I really want, to encourage people to keep requesting these things and, and we can steadily kind of build up a library of data that we can then provide in an open way that people can then use to their heart's desire. So I think in summary, um, talk about sort of what are our ambitions, you know, in terms of data and, and in terms of what we want to do at Piclo and what we want to help our system operators with. So I think the first thing is we want to support increasing complexity. So I think, you know, that we're talking about more product types. We're talking about more specific things that system operators want to achieve in their license areas. But we also want to make sure that you as FlexPex providers don't have to worry so much about that complexity. You know, you, you, you've got a unified experience and that you don't have to kind of like, you know, tailor everything to a particular system operator or product. You can just use Piccolo Flex and we handle a lot of that complexity for you. And we want to allow for a more dynamic marketplace. So, you know, we're talking about short term competitions, we're talking about different contracting. You know, we're really having a lot of conversations at the moment about exactly, you know, how we're going to achieve that in the data that we have and the data models that we use. Um, we want to make it easier for flexibility providers to manage their portfolios. So, you know, we're talking about APIs there, we're talking about improving the file-based experience, but really what our ambition is is to have this sort of asset register on our platform that people can use and use as a source of truth to understand kind of how much flexibility they have and what the revenue potentials for those portfolios are. And it kind of related to that is just provide more useful market information. So kind of understand from the fetch providers and our users what it is that you need to know, like what it is that we can give you to help you participate in the marketplace and to kind of really, you know, make that marketplace more successful. So we, we're all ears really, it's like, I mean, come talk to me after this and uh, if you have any ideas here, then I'd love to hear them, but, but please reach out as much as possible if you have any sort of suggestions or things you want to see or analytics or anything like that, anything data related, come to me. And. That's it, thank you very much.